The end of the summer transfer window is now in sight and we've got a bumper episode of the Championship Transfer Rumour Roundup coming at you today. So much to talk over in terms of done deals, rumours which are currently going around. And as always, I want to get your guys' thoughts on all of the transfer rumours in the comments down below. Without any further ado, let's jump in. Stoke have been busy of late. They completed the deal for Algerian winger Mehdi Larice. He's coming over from Sampdoria. Now, Stoke fans already got to see a glimpse of him in that game against Millwall. Came off the bench for the second half and had a really promising day. Debut. Looks like he'll be a really effective player in terms of a creative output, created two chances, had two successful dribbles in those 45 minutes against Millwall. Already a player that I'm really excited about. Nikola Jodzic also joined the club over the last seven days. The creative midfielder will look to add a bit of a spark to that Stoke side in the final third. Only 19 years old as well, so a product who they'll look to develop over these next few years. And we also saw Stoke signing Walter Berger coming over from FC Basel. Now in terms of a transfer fee paid, this is Stoke's biggest signing of the transfer window, snapping him up for a fee of around 4.3 million on a four-year contract. Now, Stoke fans have already got a taste of what the new midfielder is about. He came off the bench in the second half against Millwall, watched a compilation of that 45 minutes, and I have to say, looks like he could be the missing ingredient in that Stoke side. Adds a bit of power and athleticism to that Stoke midfield that perhaps they were lacking beforehand. Looks like an absolute towering presence, and I mean, for that sort of money, he'll have to deliver but the early signs are very promising. Taylor Gardner Hickman could be a decent pickup for Bristol City. They've signed the defender on loan for the season but also have the option to buy within this deal. Now last season he was mostly utilised as a squad player for West Brom. Most of his appearances did come from the bench. Bristol City already got to see a little bit of a taste of what the defender's about. He had the cameo appearance from the bench in their game against Hull but 21 years old. Sort of deal that I could definitely get behind from a Bristol City point of view. Norwich City just love a South American star don't they? they They've snapped up Pedro Lima on loan for the season, coming from Palmeiras. I think Brandon Williams is an interesting pickup from Ipswich Town. The Man United defenders in need of getting his career back on track, really, after not playing that much football over the last season or two. He joins Ipswich on a season-long loan, and obviously will be linking up with Kieran McKenna, who he's previously worked with in the United Academy. A decent option for Ipswich to have someone who can play either on the left or right-hand side of defence. Birmingham snatched up Jay Stansfield on loan for the season from Fulham. We knew that Blues were in need of another attacker or two and he's got off to quite the start in a Birmingham shirt. Really tidy finish on his debut coming off the back of a decent season in League One with Exeter last time where he scored nine goals. West Brom have signed 19 year old forward Ruben Shackpoke on a one year deal with the option of a further year after a successful trial period with the club. A lot of us thought that Joel Perot would be on the move this summer as he only had one year left to run on his deal at Swansea. In the end it was Leeds that took advantage of that signing him on a four year deal for a fee of around about 10 £10 million pounds. What a way he started out his career at Leeds with a goal in his debut against Ipswich. And yeah, really excited to see how he gets on at Ellen Road. Not your typical sort of Daniel Farker striker, certainly not someone who's in the Timu Puki mould, but such a clever and intelligent footballer. We've seen him put up some great numbers at Swansea over these last couple of years now. And definitely a striker that's worthy of leading the line for a side going for automatic promotion. Millwall have signed Arsenal youngster Brooke Norton Cruffy on loan for the season. Gives Gary Rowett's side another option in that right back, right wing back sort of role. He's already had several loans out. A couple of them to the Championship last season at Rotherham and Coventry. This will be the next step in his development. After seven years with Rotherham, Ben Wiles has finally called it quits on his time with the Millers. Now, he only had one year left to run on his deal at Rotherham, and so this was probably the right time from their perspective to go ahead and cash in, with it not looking likely that Wells was going to sign a new contract extension. Huddersfield are picking up a player um, who's very versatile, can play a number of roles in midfield or even in defence. Southampton stand up Everton's Mason Holgate on loan for the season. The defender in need of getting his career properly back on track, really, and maybe a dip down to the Championship could be the best thing for him. Didn't play that much football last Last season did miss a chunk of it with a knee injury but he'll be hoping to be a regular in this Southampton side to hopefully aid in a promotion push. Another player in a fairly similar scenario is Ryan Fraser. Southampton have snatched him up on loan for the season from Newcastle. Only made eight appearances in the Premier League last season and is in need of that regular first team football now. 
Arvid Depayer has joined Rotherham United on loan for the season. He's coming on loan from Almeria. He spent the last few seasons out on loan in the Spanish second division, and this is the next stage of his development. Blackburn have signed Andrew Morgan on loan for the season from Brighton. Blackburn fans have already seen a glimpse of what he's all about in his league debut against Watford. Looks like a very tidy player, especially in tight spaces, and definitely has a burst of pace to go past people. Norwich City have signed Adam Forshaw on a free transfer. Now, what Norwich really lacked last season was a bit of a backbone at times and definitely experienced. They've gone ahead and added that with plenty of experienced additions coming in throughout this window. I think Forshaw could be a tidy pickup. The caveat with this sort of deal is can you go ahead and keep him fit for a sustained amount of time? Obviously he has had those injury issues in those uh, last few years with Leeds but on a short term deal this could be a decent pickup by Norwich. Galatasaray winger Eunice Atgun has joined Leicester City on loan for this season. We've already seen Leicester's forward line being quite deadly and potent so far. Five different scorers they've had in the championship already and Atgun will be another option at Maresca's disposal. And the Premier League transfer rumour here but it finally puts to bed the debate surrounding Cameron Archer, the transfer links we've had with Archer throughout this summer being linked to several championship and Premier League clubs. Well in the end it has been Sheffield United who have managed to get that deal over the line. I think that's a really good signing there by Sheffield United even if they are relegated from the Premier League this season. Archer capable of being one of the top forwards at this level and definitely has Premier League potential. And we saw Southampton's Nathan Teller joining Bayer Leverkusen on a permanent basis in a deal worth up and around £20 million. Now, fair play to Southampton because they could have caved to some of the pressure from Burnley earlier in the window when they were trying to sign the winger for almost half the asking price. In the end, Southampton have got a decent transfer fee out of this one, but there's no doubt that the loss of Teller does leave a gaping gap in that front line. Line. We saw from those opening matches how influential he could have been for the Saints over this season, but he now gets a great move to Germany, where I'm sure he'll continue to develop and thrive. And we saw Leicester defender Timothy Castagna completing his move to Fulham on a permanent basis. The defender had featured in three ma league matches for Leicester this season, but now has penned a deal with Fulham in the Premier League. But there we have it guys, those are some of the deals which have gone through over the past seven days in the championship. Now without any further ado, let's hop into the rumours. Leeds United are in advanced negotiations to take Jed Spence on loan for the season. There's also been some rumblings that potentially there could be an option to buy included in this deal as well. Now we all saw Leeds missing out on Max Ahrens earlier in the window after Bournemouth hijacked that deal. So it's obvious that they're looking to strengthen this position. And going off Spence's profile, I think he'd be a really good fit into a Daniel Farker system. We know how important fullbacks are to the German boss and I think that where Spence is at in his career right now, a dip back down to the championship will probably do him the world of good. We all saw how influential and great he was during that loan spell with Nottingham Forest during their promotion season but since that point things just haven't worked out for him. The move to Tottenham hasn't gone well, had a short stint out on loan with Rennes in Ligue 1 last season but didn't really play that much football there either. And it just seems as if to get his career back on track maybe a move to a side like Leeds who will be gunning for promotion would be the best for all parties involved. Lewis O'Brien, another player looking to get his career back on track after his move to Nottingham Forest hasn't quite gone to plan. Started out quite well at the city ground but obviously lost his place in that squad and then spent the second half of last season out on loan in MLS at DC United. Plenty of championship clubs have expressed an interest in taking the Forest midfielder, the likes of Leeds, Middlesbrough, Coventry and Ipswich all interested in a deal here. We know from his time at Huddersfield just how influential he can be at championship level. I do think he'd be an excellent pickup for any of those sides. Ghanaian winger Joseph Payne still is a player in demand right now. He's coming off the back of a fantastically prolific season with Genk where he scored 17 goals and provided 11 assists in the league. It had been rumoured that a potential 10 million deal was in place between Genk and Leeds United, although that deal has since stalled and Southampton have been the latest club to register an interest in the 25-year-old winger. Now we know that the Saints are looking to strengthen their forward line with the loss of Teller already confirmed. Seemingly so, Leeds are still in the race to go ahead and sign him, but time will tell if... 
it's either Southampton or Leeds that managed to get this deal over the line. Does look like a really exciting player that would add a lot to the championship. Could Southampton forward Che Adams end up staying in the championship after all? The speculation surrounding the Scottish forward has been rife throughout the summer, with Everton the most interested party. But Sean Dyche's side are currently focusing their attempts to sign Beto over Adams, and so he finds himself in transfer limbo, as it were, at this stage. And obviously, Adams was left out of the Southampton squad for their most recent championship match with Russell Martin claiming that the speculation has affected him of late. He does only have one year left to run on his deal at Southampton, but if he stays past this window, potentially there's a bit of room for him to sign a new deal if Southampton do show that ambition to get back up to the Premier League at the first time of asking. It's going to be a, a few very interesting days to sort out the future of Adams for sure. Swansea City goalkeeper Stephen Bender appears to be on his way to Fulham. He'll be going in there as a backup option uh, to go ahead and back up Leno, I'm sure. Coming off the back of a big ACL injury, Swansea reportedly getting around about £1 million for this deal, which I think would be a decent bit of business for a goalkeeper who only has one year left to run on his current deal at Swansea. And with Bender going in at Fulham, that could open the door for Mark Rodak to leave on loan. A few championship clubs have been linked. Seems as though Ipswich are currently one of the most prevalent clubs being linked with the Fulham goalkeeper. Now, whenever we've seen him at championship level, I think Rodak has been absolutely fantastic, played a vital role in Fulham's last two promotions from the Championship, had an excellent loan spell out with Rotherham as well and hasn't really been afforded that many opportunities while Fulham have been in the Premier League obviously they've got Leno to rely upon now considering that Christian Walton has been sidelined for the foreseeable future for Ipswich, you can see why they'd be sniffing around this type of deal. Swansea City have reportedly made a bit of around about 1.5 million to sign Josh Tymon from Stoke City this summer. Now Tymon seems to have fallen down the pecking order at Stoke under Alex Neal, there was a point where Tymon was seen as one of Stoke's highest performing players but seems as if Ender Stevens is the preferred option on that left hand side I know that Tymon did start that game um, against Millwall last time out but generally speaking it's been Stevens starting on that side. Along with Swansea, Leeds United have also been linked but the Swans could be looking to wrap this deal up sooner rather than later. Southampton are one of the championship clubs being linked with Brighton forward Andy Zekri as they're looking to add to their forward options between now and the end of the window did have a decent loan spell out at FC Basel last season where he scored 14 goals across all competitions. Emmanuel Ayewu looks set to complete his move over to Birmingham City with a deal in place of around about £3 million. Now this would be another example of Birmingham looking to pick up a youngster who they can develop, 22 years old, to be coming over from Italy. Can play in a variety of positions as well, seemed most comfortable at centre half but can also operate as a holding midfielder or right back. Birmingham been making some serious moves this summer. Leicester City midfielder Wilfred Ndidi appears to be close to signing for Nottingham Forest. The player himself seems to be pushing for this move which would see him returning to the Premier League. It does appear as if Leicester could have quite a few outgoings between now and the end of the window given the current reports and players that are being linked away. Kalecha Iheanacho could be another Leicester player leaving between now and the end of the window as Wolves are said to go in with a bid of around about 15 million which could see the player sold. Given the potential outgoings at Leicester between now and the end of the window it's going to be very interesting to see how Maresca's side is looking compared to now and when transfer deadline day comes around. But guys, there we have it. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do get all your thoughts in the comments down below. Other than that though, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.